wanted to take a few minutes and review the PowerPoint we, that we did on reducing valves, regulators, and flow meters. Just to review a couple of definitions first, remember a reducing valve is the valve that reduces the higher pressure down to a lower pressure, typically in our application from 2,000 pounds or 2,200 pounds in a tank down to our operating pressure of 50 pounds. The flow meter is a device that controls and indicates flow, or another way to say that allows us to change flow and see how much flow is being delivered through the device. And then a regulator is a combination of a reducing valve and a flow meter together. Typically these will also include either an ASI connection to connect to the large H cylinders that we've been using or a PISS connection if we're using it with a small tank such as an E cylinder. So again these reducing valves simply reduce the pressure from 2200 pounds down to our 50 pounds of pressure that we need. Most of our reducing valves that we're going to use in application in, in the hospital on these tanks and so forth are going to be single stage reducing valves. They do a one step down from the 2000 to 50 by opposing pressures of the spring tension and the gas pressures in order to get down to the 50 PSI that we need for our equipment. We may also encounter some multi-stage reducing valves these are going to allow for more precise control of pressure and they're going to have a more laminar flow. Typically we're not going to see these in, in our application in the hospital. You may recall we saw some multi-stage reducing valves outside when we looked at their bulk system here for the college. This is just a schematic showing a single stage or non-adjustable reducing valve. The, the blue part of the image down here at the bottom is, is illustrating the uh, spring that's preset for a 50 PSI outlet for gas outlet, gas output. And this is a similar diagram, the difference being that here the spring is adjustable by turning the knob that you see on the bottom of this image. And this little party toy or party favor is my attempt to show you guys the principle or how a Bordon gauge works as a kid puts this in his mouth, he produces a pressure or a flow. When he blows through here, the paper uncoils as it does, um, or as the pressure increases. And then when the pressure drops again, it rolls back together. And if you imagine taking and attaching a needle to that system, it would indicate flow or pressure. And that's basically what the Bordon gauge pressure does. It's either calibrated for pressure or flow to indicate the flow that's being delivered or the pressure that's being exerted on the copper spring. And the schematic on the left is just showing the image of that and on the right we're seeing two Bordon gauges. This one is regulated and calibrated to indicate flow and the one on the right is calibrated to indicate pressure. And a nice close-up image of a Bordon spring. Here we have a couple of Thorpe tube flow meters. These are the oxygen, I'm sorry, these are the gas delivery devices that we're going to see and use most often in the hospital. Probably have seen these right often uh, already in clinical. These typically are calibrated or not calibrated but are or will display flows up to 15 liters per minute. Uh, 15, 13, 11, 9, we can see on the flow meter here. They will go above 15, but once we get above 15 liters, we lose the ability to see how much flow is being delivered. Both of them have a standard or common DISS connection, the outlet here, and we can connect either a Christmas tree or a nipple adapter, it's called sometimes, to either one of these devices. We talked about a couple different times types of Thorpe tubes, the non-back pressure compensated Thorpe tube, where the needle valve is before the tube indicator or before the Thorpe tube, and the Thorpe tube is not pressurized to 50 PSI, and if back pressure or resistance is placed distal to the outlet, the float may drop and the patient will not receive, or you won't have an accurate reading as to what gas is being delivered to the patient. The Thorpe tube flow meter is 
back pressure compensated. It is the type of flow meter that we're going to see more often. The needle valve is distal to the Thorpe tube. The Thorpe tube is pressurized to 50 pounds of pressure, PSI, and if resistance is placed downstream from the Thorpe tube, it will read accurate. So if something happens and there's some resistance that prevents the gas from being delivered to the patient, it will accurately reflect that change to you so you'll be aware of it. Um, the, the diagrams here I think are a little bit nicer or a little more descriptive than the images in HESS. Uh, this is showing the needle valve prior to the Thorpe tube. So everything from here to the left is pressurized to 50 PSI. Everything from here to the right is atmospheric pressure. Uh, so your Thorpe tube is not pressurized. This is non-compensated. Here your needle valve is distal to the Thorpe tube. So the Thorpe tube is pressurized. Everything from here back to the left will be uh, pressurized at 50 PSI. So if you, again, if you get resistance out here, something occludes part of the flow, your needle, um, sorry, your ball will accurately indicate how much flow is actually being delivered to the patient. So how do you tell the difference? Again, you may have a Thorpe tube that has a label on it telling you that it's pressure compensated or not. You certainly can connect it to a 50 PSI gas source, and if it's pressure compensated, the float will jump and then fall back down to zero in the Thorpe tube, and we demonstrated that in the class. The location of the needle valve we talked about, or another way to test it is set your flow at two or three, four liters per minute, completely occlude the outlet of the gas flow, and it should read zero if it is back pressure compensated. Again, most of the flow meters that we've seen are incremented up to 15 liters per minute. They may go higher than that, but we lose the ability to measure the pressure, no, I'm sorry, the flow. We may see some pediatric flow meters graduated up to three liters or eight liters. Again, to allow us to set two liters or 2.5 liters or 2.75 sometimes to be a little more precise. And there's also some neonatal flow meters Instead of being graduated in liters per minute, they're graduated in milliliters per minute to allow you even less or a lower flow. So a Bordon flow meter allows us to also control the pressure to drop it from 2,000 to 50 pounds, and it also uses that driving pressure to control the, either the pressure that's displayed in the Bordon gauge to show you how much is in the tank or the flow to show you how much flow is being delivered. Uh, the, the problem or one of the issues with the Bordon flow meter is it is not pressure compensated. So if pressure is placed downstream or distal to your flow meter or your outlet, the reading may actually be higher than what is coming out of the orifice or what's being delivered to the patient. So again, it's not back pressure compensated. So good for, good for transport. You can lay it in a stretcher with the patient, lay it in the bed with them uh, if you need to, and you can still adjust and regulate the flow with it laid on its side. Probably a little bit durable in some ways than a Thorpe tube flow meter, but it's not back pressure compensated. So just make sure you kind of understand the difference in the Thorpe tube and the Bordon gauge. The flow restrictor uh, is, the, is another type. It works kind of like the Bordon gauge in that it's not back pressure compensated. Um, I think of it kind of like the adjustable orifice on a shower head. If you turn or rotate the, the big head here or the, where you see the arrows, it will change or alter the flow that's coming out of the shower head and this adjustable orifice oxygen flow meter does similarly. Um, here we have a Bordon gauge that's measuring pressure and then it's connected to this adjustable orifice flow meter and when you turn the knob down here on the end the flow is indicated in the window here. In this case it, it's reading 1.5 or 1.5 liters of flow. Um, these are in some ways better than Thorpe tubes, some advantages. They will accurately read and indicate flow if it's laid on its side or upside down or what have you. Uh, again, probably more durable than the Thorpe tube, but they are not back pressure compensated. 
Uh, we have the this one, a little bit different design. You may have seen some of these. And then the fixed orifice, uh, we, I did have one of those that I showed you guys in class. That uh, is the device that Carolina East is currently using to deliver their small volume nibs. Pop it in the wall, it delivers a set flow of 8 liters per minute. Pop it out of the wall, it stops flow. Uh, I hope this review has been helpful and I appreciate your time.